It was actually last football season. I was struggling with fatigue um, in my job as a head football coach. It's pretty stressful and uh, takes a lot of hours. So it's pretty normal to go 12, 14 hours a day, especially during the season, even off season with recruiting and things like that. So uh, I just really struggle with fatigue. And so my team doctor is one that he started going through and started running tests. You know, when you develop a relationship with your doctor, team doctor, he knew me very well. And so all the tests kept coming back normal. Everything he put me through was, was coming back normal. And, and I just kept telling him, you know, Dr. Ellison, we're missing something. Something's not right. And so he kept looking, which I am so thankful for. Um, but the big thing was the fatigue and um, just not feeling on myself as far as the brain fog, some of that stuff, just struggling to get through the days. Sometimes it's because a patient has noticed changes in body features or symptoms um, that may not appear to be related to the pituitary gland per se. For example, things very common like diabetes or high blood pressure or headaches or problems with vision, weight gain, um, these things that may occur in anyone for a number of other reasons other than the pituitary tumor. So sometimes it's just because the patient comes to attention, uh, because they've noticed something. Uh, sometimes it's their primary care on a routine screening that has noticed something, um, on an annual screening or something like that. It may even be a, a friend. I've had sometimes patients say, you know, somebody said that you look different and, you know, they hadn't seen me for seven or eight years. Maybe they've now got changes of excess growth hormone secretion, acromegaly, or, or, or I've kept on gaining weight and I'm not changing my diet or my habits or whatever. Trivial things like that may be the case. I mean, Dr. O, you know, what a personable guy who, you know, to be of his, I hate to say stature, I guess, but, you know, he treated me like I was his very first patient and that I was his only patient. I was the only person that mattered. And I know I'm not the most important person in the world. I actually, I like to think a couple of people like my grandchildren and my children, and my wife, but, you know, to him, that's how he made me feel. And that was the whole thing, him, Dr. Thorpe, you know, his medical team, his surgical team, um, Dr. Harris and everybody that, you know, I came in touch with. And I knew that if I was able to return to my team this season, I was going to have to take some steps to protect myself. It's dangerous out there when you're around, you know, teenage kids who are going to be playing it, you know, for the Tar Heels or the Volunteers or George Bulldogs or whoever the next year. And so I had to come up with a way. So we came up with a way with the hockey helmet. What a blessing it is when you have people who will love and care for you and they're not related to you. And you need to be thankful for that. So the helmet that I was gonna wear, I wanted it to be an outward thank you to, to them. So what I did was my helmet, I had a local artist and they decorated it. I wanna pay tribute to these to these wonderful people that, that brought me in and treated me like I was one of their own and, and cared about what I was going through and tried to ease my mind on some things. And, but yet also gave me accurate information all the way through that was specific to me. Well, we were, we were so touched and appreciative of the recognition and the attention um, that uh, Coach gave uh, to our team. And um, uh, it's always a, a, a thing of joy. Um, it's priceless um, uh, when, when patients and their families uh, are appreciative and show that appreciation like Coach Lord did. It's really touching. It's important to have a multidisciplinary team to work on these tumors because these are complexly complex tumors located in areas that require the skill set and experience of different surgeons. Because we go through the nasal passages into the sinuses to the base of the brain, we need the skills and the experience of a uh, nasal skull base, ENT nasal uh, skull base surgeon. Of course, a neurosurgeon is absolutely because the surgery is done and in the nervous system within the, the base of the brain structures that surround the gland relate to the brain the nerves the blood vessels and so on and people who do this operation have to be facile and experienced because they're rare tumors so you don't see a lot of them in the community <clears throat> and so people who develop expertise are people who focus their practices on in this area, build up that experience. 
my medical team from the UNC hospital to Dr. O's team to Dr. Thorpe's team and Dr. Harris's team. And so I have 100% trust in, in these people. I love them to death. And, and I'm just so thankful that um, God put them in my path during a time that's very scary.